So picture this, LDL cholesterol through the roof at 400 milligrams per deciliter, but hey, you feel amazing. Your doctor is having a mild panic attack, but you've read that dietary cholesterol doesn't matter, right? So you decide to add some extended fasting, maybe 48 hours weekly, or the trendy OMAD thing to really optimize your health. So here's something interesting, that combination might be creating the perfect storm for cardiovascular disease, especially if you have something called familial hypercholesterolemia. And honestly, most people with FH don't even know they have it. Familial hypercholesterolemia, let's just call it FH because I'm not saying that 10 more times. It's a genetic lottery you really don't want to win. About 1 in 250 people have it, which means statistically, several of you watching right now have FH and don't even know it. So here's what's happening at the cellular level. Your liver cells have these little molecular dormant called LDL receptors. Specifically, the LDLR gene codes for these receptors. So their job, grab LDL cholesterol particles from your bloodstream and drag them inside for processing. Well, it turns out that if you inherit one faulty copy of this gene, and we're talking about mutations in the LDLR gene or sometimes the APOB or PCSK9 genes, your cellular dormen are, let's say, they're not great at their job. They're either sleeping on duty or there just aren't enough of them. So check this out. I find this absolutely interesting. Now, here's where things get, well, I don't want to say it, certainly unexpected. The Netherlands FH registry and this is actually a massive data set spanning 30 years, found that in healthy people, LDL particles circulate two to three days. In FH, residence time often extends to four to five plus days. So high fat meals also slow clearance of triglycerides rich remnants, so more atherogenic particles linger. So what this means is that if your LDL receptors are already compromised and you're eating a diet that naturally raises LDL like carnivore, those particles are just floating around in your bloodstream for way longer than they should be. Okay, so now let's talk about fasting. And honestly, this is where the carnivore fasting combo becomes generally concerning for FH individuals. During prolonged fasts, free fatty acids and VLDL export rise. The liver prioritizes fat export over uptake which can reduce effective LDL clearance during the fast. Direct human data showing a large drop in LDL receptor expression are limited. So here's what's happening during, let's say, a 48-hour fast if you have FH. You already impaired LDL receptors become even more impaired. Meanwhile, when you break that fast with a massive carnivore meal, let's say two pounds of ribeye and some eggs, you're creating this enormous lipid load that hits a clearance system already compromised. So now you might be thinking, but Maurice, carnivore fixes insulin resistance and better insulin sensitivity improves LDL clearance. And you're absolutely right in people with normal LDL receptors. So Dr. Dave Filsman's work with the lipid energy model is actually fascinating, but even he acknowledges that his lean mass hyperresponder phenotype assumes normal LDL receptor function. When those receptors are genetically compromised, different ball game entirely. So let's be practical about this. A typical carnivore OMAD meal might include two to three pounds of fatty meat. That's roughly about 200 to 300 grams of fat hitting your system at once. In someone with FH that creates postperennial lipemia, which is prolonged in FH, often persistent well into the next day, far longer than people with normal clearance. Honestly, 
thus not optimization, thus creating a chronic state of elevated atherogenic particles. Look, I'm not trying to fear monger here, but we need to talk about real risk. The Simon Broom Registry in the UK tracked 3,000 FH patients and found that untreated individuals develop coronary disease by age 45 and average. Men by 40, women by 50. Now, add chronic uh, postprandial lipemia from extended fasting and high fat refeeding, we're potentially accelerating that timeline. The data are compelling. One Dr. Helen Hobbs at UT Southwestern studied FH families, she found that lifestyle factors that normally protect against heart disease like exercise and good diet had diminished protective effects in people with severe LDL receptor dysfunction. Now here's where the reality check. If you're doing carnivore, and extended fasting and feeling great, you probably don't have FH. People with undiagnosed FH often feel, well, they often don't feel great on extremely high fat diets. But here's the thing, and this is important, about 75% of people with FH are undiagnosed. So if you have a family history of early heart disease or your LDL is consistently above the 190 milligrams per deciliter, it might be worth getting genetic testing before doubling down on extended fasting protocols. So what's the solution? If you suspect you might have FH but still want to optimize your metabolic health, first get tested. Genetic testing for FH is relatively straightforward now and most insurance covers it if your LDL is above 190. Second, if you're test positive for FH, time-restricted eating might be safer than extended fasting. So think of 16-8 or 18-6 rather than OMAD or 48-hour fasts. This gives your impaired clearance system more frequent, smaller challenges rather than massive lipid tsunami. And third, consider splitting your carnivore meals. Instead of one massive feast, maybe two smaller meals within a four to six hour window. Now, Dr. Ronald Cross and others show two smaller early meals meaningfully reduce peak postprandial lipemia compared to one large late meal. Lean proteins, omega-3s, nitric oxide support. I've been 11 years strong carnivore, but there's my reason for eating lean animal products. And I stopped as of last week doing a weekly 48 to 72 hour fasting. So track your ApoB, aim for under 80 milligrams per deciliter and go lower if you're in a higher risk group. And honestly, if you have FH, you probably want to be working with a lipidologist anyway. These are the cardiologists who specialize in genetic lipid disorders, and they're usually more knowledgeable about optimizing protocols for people with compromised LDL clearance. Look, here's the thing. Carnivore and fasting can be powerful tools for metabolic health. But if you have FH, you're essentially playing by different biological rules. The same protocols that work beautifully for people with normal LDL receptor function might be creating chronic atherogenic risk in people with genetic clearance defects. And since most people with FH don't know they have it, and trust me on this, as I carry this gene defect. Well, it might be worth ruling out before committing to protocols that could accelerate cardiovascular disease in this specific population. I guess you could say when it comes to FH and extended fasting, it's better to be safe than sorogenic particles floating around. This isn't just cholesterol trivia. Families like mine lose people young, so get checked. And remember, stay curious, stay critical, and question everything. If you want deeper dives into lipid metabolism and genetic variations, check out my substack where we really get into the biochemical weeds and let me know in the comments have any of you gotten genetic testing for fh i'm generally curious about your experiences cheers
business as well. You ain't free, you least to survive a feed disease, keep dreams deprived. Clock in decay, don't misbehave, just be a number, not a wave. Doctor says stress hands me a script. Side effects longer than the work shift Food's a weapon, news is a sedative Truth got buried, profits the relative Thinkers question, workers comply Guess which one they fund Just be a number, not a wave.